Good morning. It is day 10 of Vlogmas. It is Sunday, which is reset day for me. Today is the day that I try to get my house and life in order for the week ahead. I've already sat down with my planner and just jotted down whatever appointments and things we all have going on this week that need to be noted. And I had a little bit of a quiet morning watching some vlogmases and catching up on some knitting. It was a really nice start to my day. I put in my stripes for my advent socks today and I even finished a whip, which is very exciting. This does not happen every day around here. I finished my DK weight vanilla socks and I am so happy about it. I've been wanting these to be off the needles so that I could wear them for ages. I think, I don't think I've ever been as excited to actually wear a pair of socks as I am for these. These are the perfect socks for me. I just feel like they're so much more comfortable than a fingering weight sock. And I love this yarn. So this pattern is from the crazy sock lady, Kay Litton. It's just it's a free pattern, which is wonderful, and it's called DK Weight Vanilla Socks. The yarn is also a favorite of mine. It's Legacy Fiber Arts, the 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon base, and this color is After Dinner Mints. And even though it's very pastel-y and kind of spring summer-like, this actually reminds me of these mints that my mom would always buy at Christmas time and leave in a candy dish. They were pastel colored mints that melted in your mouth. They were like chocolates actually, chocolates, but they were minty and they were delicious. I'm gonna look for them actually. I'm obsessed with this colorway. It's so pretty. I can't wait to wear these. I love this height because I think they're going to be perfect to wear with my ankle boots. So I finished that this morning, which was such a good feeling. And I caught up on some more vlogmases. I know I shared a bunch of my favorites yesterday and I also listed them all out in the description box yesterday and I completely forgot one. For some reason, I sat down this morning with my knitting. I started to search for which one I was going to watch next. And I realized I have not started watching Camilla's vlogs. That is Camilla from Camijo Knits. I have one of her advent calendars, which is stunning. I adore her videos. And I totally binge watched like four or five of them. Her vlogmas is so good. If you are looking for one and you do not watch hers, you need to check it out. She lives in Denmark. The snow there is beautiful. Her food looks delicious. Her dyeing and her knitting projects are really inspirational. And she is a lovely woman. So I would highly recommend her Vlogmas. I will put it down in the description box along with all the others I suggested yesterday. So that's been my new morning practice. It's slowed down a little bit from the last couple of weeks, I'm finally getting into a bit more of a cozy routine. So each morning I work on my advent socks and they're looking beautiful. I am done for today. I love them. So I just spent my morning knitting and my new routine is to watch some vlogmases in the morning, do my advent stripe for the day. It's also a time if I have a little bit of extra time that I'm going to work on a whip that I'd like to finish. So today it was this one. I think in the next few days, if I have some extra morning knitting time, I'm going to work on this hat, which is my Stockholm hat from Petite Knits. And the yarn is Chelsea Lux Yarns in Sugar Plum held with pink peony mohair. And that's in this bag. So I think that's kind of my morning routine. And then in the afternoons, I am working on my new shawl cast on, the number 10 shawl. 
by Versace Knits and I'm loving it. I spent quite a bit of time yesterday afternoon just working on that and I feel like it's a really nice afternoon or evening knit. So that is my knitting routine done. I'm really happy about it. I've got laundry going. I'm just going to pick up a few things around the house and get it organized for the week. I already did a bit of a cleanup in my bedroom yesterday, which I really like to do either on a Friday or a Sunday. So I'm just going to see what else needs to be done around the house. I might pull out some of my Christmas cookbooks, start to think about what I'm planning on making this year that might be different from the usual, make a few lists, pull out my Christmas notebook. I'm kind of excited to do that. It's already the 10th. So we basically have one more weekend before Christmas after this one. Lists need to be made. Some shopping needs to happen. But I think today is about knitting and cookbooks and just getting ready for the week ahead. It is that time in Vlogmas to share my favorite Christmas cookbooks with you. If you guys have been around for a while, you know how much I love my cookbooks. Here is my cookbook bookcase that is overflowing. I have a bit of overspill in the kitchen and over here, and I even have some in this corner cabinet over here. I love my cookbooks. I have quite a few, but there's definitely a few favorites for this time of year. I've even got some down there. And today I wanted to share my old favorites and some of my new favorites. I'm going to start with the stack that's in my dining room of all of my oldest, most favorite Christmas cookbooks. Although this first one is not that old, it just happens to be in this pile. This one is called Christmas Baking from Joyce and Laura Klinstra. It's a really beautiful book. It would also be a great one if you don't have any for the holidays because I think it's just a perfectly well-rounded book for cookies and treats during the holidays. I feel like this might have been a recommendation from Christina at Chelsea Yarns a year or two ago. We share a love of cookbooks and every time we find something really good, we let the other one know. And I feel like she had this one and then I went and got it. You can see there are a lot of classic holiday candies and treats. It's a really good one to have. I'm not gonna spend too much time flipping through each one, otherwise we will be here all day. Another one that I really love in my collection, it's a little bit more of like a coffee table or flip through book for me. I haven't actually made anything from it, but it's beautiful. It's called Winter Sweet, Seasonal Desserts to Warm the Home from Tammy Dunro Inman. It's really pretty, I like that it's winter themed, not necessarily holiday themed. I just haven't gotten around to making anything from here. But it's a beautiful book. I really like pulling this one out every December and flipping through it. You can see not as many photos, but it's a really pretty book. Next one is another classic, the Donna Hay Christmas Feasts and Treats. I see this one every year. She is such a great cookbook author. Her photos are beautiful, really modern, kind of streamlined. And it's a really pretty book. Again, not one I use a lot of the recipes from, but I like having it. I like just sitting with my coffee and flipping through a good cookbook, and this is a really nice one to do that with. Now we're getting into my absolute favorites, my oldest ones. I pull them out every year and they just remind me of the holidays. The Pastry Queen Christmas from Rebecca Rather is a beautiful book. I love it. I love, love, love this one. 
I've made a few recipes in here and they are delicious. And some I just like to look at. She does a lot of beautiful, very, I don't wanna, like maybe complex cakes and gingerbread houses that I love to look at. I would probably never make them, but a lot of her other recipe recipes I do make. And I just love this book. I want to show you one of her gingerbread houses. Look at this. Look how stunning is that? So she's a very talented baker, cake decorator. I've made this, it's to die for. Green olive beef tenderloin. It's a beautiful book. So this one, I love having it in my collection. It just screams Christmas to me. One of my absolute favorites is the Jamie Oliver's Christmas Cookbook. I've made quite a few things from here. He is one of my favorites and he's one of the first cookbook authors that kind of sucked me into this whole cookbook obsession. It's basically Jamie Oliver, Nigella Lawson. They started it all for me. And this is a really beautiful book. I lucked out and found this in a clearance section one year for a ridiculously low price. It was after Christmas. I don't know, it was such a good find because look at the photos in this book. It's stunning. I love all of the different chapters in here. I love all of the different wintry meal ideas. The classic recipes for the holidays. I love his turkey and gravy recipes. Um, really classic Sunday roast type recipes. You cannot beat these recipes of his. I love this book. There are some sweet treats, but it's just overall presentation I love too. Look at these potatoes, they look so good. Hasselback potatoes. I have made the honeycomb from this cookbook a few times for Glenn. It's a household favorite. Lots of pudding recipes. Let's see if I can find the honeycomb. I should try his fudge. Here it is. So I've made this in Vlogmas before. It's delicious. It makes a bit of a mess, but it is so worth it. Classic book. This is another classic. I think these are kind of hard to find now. I've seen a few people share theirs and I had a look online to see if I could find any other Susan Branch holiday cookbooks. You can find them in used bookshops or like book outlets online. I have the Christmas from the heart of the home and it's really sweet. If you know Susan Branch, you know her illustrations and her style. It's just almost like picking up someone's notebook from their kitchen with like handwritten recipes. It's a beautiful book. It's one of the first Christmas cookbooks I ever got. And I love it. I love the illustrations in here. So this one is really sweet and nice to flip through. And of course, my girl, Nigella. The Nigella Christmas is another classic cookbook. It's big, it's hardcover. I have spent hours flipping through this book over the years. I've made quite a few things. There's probably some really messed up pages you can see. I love her. I love her recipes. She's just amazing. I used to love her cooking show. She used to have a cooking special, I think. Oh, I would love to watch that again. It's a great book. I love how both her and Jamie Oliver put in a lot of the types of meals that you would have before and after the holidays, like using leftovers, or if you're having people over before the holidays. It's just my kind of cookbook. So this is definitely a favorite, and I would highly recommend 
this cookbook. This is another stack of Christmas or holiday inspired cookbooks that I have stacked up on my coffee table in the front room. These are from this year and I think last year and I haven't used them as much. I'm not as familiar with them. And so they are up here so that I can easily grab them and flip through whenever I feel like it. This one is the new addition to my collection this year. It's called Advent by Anya Dunk. And the reason I got this one, I was on a hunt for one Christmas cookbook purchase back in November. I was kind of inspired by this one, which is the one that I purchased last year. Nordic Winter Cookbook by Viola Minerva Vertamo. And I loved this cookbook so much that I wanted something similar. I have plenty of cookbooks that are really practical and filled with recipes that I would make at any given time during December or during the holidays. But I loved this cookbook so much for all of the other stuff in it, the photography, there are a couple of little crafts to do. It just had a really beautiful aesthetic and I loved it so much that I thought, why not try to find something like this again this year? I was searching online. I couldn't find anything. I spent a few days looking for something. And out of nowhere, I got a DM on Instagram from the lovely Vanessa from my creative garage. She is a yarn dyer and bag maker in Australia. She knows how much I love cookbooks. She shares the same love. And she messaged me totally randomly and told me about this new cookbook that she got. I looked it up. I found a little bit of a flip through somewhere or a couple of sneak peeks at pages. And I immediately, immediately knew it needed to be added to my collection. Since then, I have seen a few other people talk about it this year. I know Laura from Penrose Knits has it, and she's even made something from it. I know, um, I've just seen it pop up, but this is my 2023 new cookbook. I'll share a little bit of a flip through of this one in a moment, but this other little stack here has some of my newer cookbooks. So this was the one I picked up last year and love it. This is another one I really like that has kind of a cozy feel to it. It's Christmas at River Cottage by Lucy Brazier. And I love River Cottage cookbooks. I don't have all of them, but I really love the coziness to their cookbooks. And this is a really beautiful one. I think I was influenced to purchase this one from Laura at Penrose Knits. She has a lovely Vlogmas, by the way. So this is another favorite and I like having it on the coffee table to just pick up and flip through whenever I want. And this was another new one, I think from last year, it's Baking for the Holidays by Sarah Kiefer. And it just has all kinds of cookies and treats to make during December. So these are kind of my newer favorites and I love them. But because this is the brand new one, I thought I would share a little bit more of a flip through of this one. There are so many things to love about this cookbook. It is called Advent, Festive German Bakes to Celebrate the Coming of Christmas by Anya Dunk. It is a beautiful hard covered book with a linen cover and gold leaf. It has a ribbon bookmark, which I love. And some of the things I really love about this book are the overall aesthetic, the beautiful photography. It's stunning. I love the matte pages as well. I really like how everything is numbered from one to 25. And you can really see the progression of December throughout the recipes in this book. 
So one of the things I noticed right off the bat was at the beginning of the month, there are simpler recipes for things that you might want to make to start preparing for the holidays, like this salt dough that you can use to make wreaths or candle holders. There are simpler um, cookies. There's a spice mix to make if you want to gift that. And a lot of the cookies in the beginning are kind of like dry or simple cookies that are perfect with coffee. So I just imagine you might be meeting up with friends or having a friend over at the beginning of the month, um, just spending time with people and pulling out cookies like this to have with coffee or tea. I think they're beautiful. And then throughout the month, things start to get a little bit different. There's a lot of breakfast rolls, um, loaves of bread, just lots of baked goods that are nice to make in the winter. And look at this photography, the china, the shelves in the kitchen. It's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really pretty. There's some artwork here and there. I just really love how you get this representation of the month of December in here. I also really liked that a lot of these recipes feel familiar to me. I'm not German, and I know these are all German-inspired, but my father is Italian, and my mother is French-Canadian, and we had a lot of these cookies growing up. And I think that might be the case in Europe where there are a few countries that have very similar looking cookies with a slightly different spin on them, maybe some different spices, but they're definitely classics that are, I guess they just vary from country to country, but a lot of these look familiar to me. So pretty. So some of the recipes that I marked off right off the bat were for this Christmas fried dough. My aunt used to make something like this every single Christmas. It is a very Italian dessert or sweet treat, but ours are slightly different. So I really like seeing another version and I'm curious to try these. I feel like we would like this. So. I might try this over the holidays or maybe just after Christmas when things are kind of slow and cozy the week between Christmas and New Year's. I tend to bake and cook a lot of different things that week because it's kind of a vacation time for us. These cork fritters look really interesting to me. I make something like this with ricotta cheese, so I'm curious to see if I can find cork here and maybe try these for a change. These classic cinnamon stars look really nice and I've never made anything like that. I love macaroons and any kind of coconut treat. So I would like to try these coconut macaroons. They look slightly different, but delicious. My mom makes a cookie that looks like this and I'm curious to see what these ones would be like the jam-filled double-deckers. Oops, I thought this was adorable. Lucky meringue mushrooms. How cute are those? And I like reading about different traditions. Um, it says here that mushrooms are a huge part of German life. So I really like that and I just, want to sit down and flip through and read some of these little blurbs because I find regional cooking so interesting. I like that there are a lot of recipes in here for decorations. So there are meringue wreaths for the tree. This I don't like. This I don't really like mice. So I don't think I will ever be making meringue mice, but they are kind of cute if you're into that kind of thing but there are instructions on how to make the dried oranges in here for ornaments or for a wreath. 
and they even have one for dried apple slices, which I've never done before. That might be interesting to try. This is a really classic dessert from my childhood or cookie, so I'm wondering what this one would be like for vanilla crescents. Iced orange bi biscuits look really good as well. And I think I might just have to try this one based on the name alone, Sandy Shortbread. I love anything orange flavored. And these jam filled donuts look incredible. I love how towards the end of the month, everything here is just super festive and a little bit more indulgent, I'd say. There are recipes for these jam-filled donuts that look delicious, some really sweet treats, some beverages, punch, mulled wine. Just when things are getting super festive, you can really see, you can see that in the recipes. Chocolate-coated walnut marzipan, that looks beautiful. Peppermint fondants, almond chocolates, rum balls. It's really beautiful. If you are looking for a very holiday inspired cookbook that you could bake from, but would also be a beautiful coffee table book, I think this is the one. It's the only holiday cookbook I purchased this year. It's definitely a new favorite. Thank you, Vanessa, for recommending it to me. I absolutely love it. And it's just gonna sit here in my front room to be picked up whenever I need a little bit of holiday inspiration.